Thank you for viewing the newest auxiliary tank design from Maple. The main feature of this design is the universal mounting plate that can be deployed on all BMW models equipped with a grid type luggage rack. BMWs that accept the 28 liter or 49 liter type case are candidates for our product. These models include the new K1600 GT and GTL, all flavors of the R1200, the R, RT, and ST, the K1600 GT, the K1300 GT, and all variants of the F800, the R, S, and ST. Using this mounting plate as a basis, you can opt for just the luggage deck, or as shown here, an auxiliary fuel tank and the luggage deck. The remainder of this video will highlight the features of each component, demonstrate the assembly of the components, and with a grand finale of an installation on a K1600 GTL. A feature of the LRM is that it is modular. You can mount just the deck, or just the auxiliary tank, or the tank and the deck. Or if you have your own design, you can use our plate to mount your items. Multiple mounting holes are available. This allows you to use the center position or to shift the load forward or rivered on the base one and one half inches. The base plate is constructed of thick aluminum plate and uses stainless steel hardware. On the back side, you can see the custom fabricated retaining tabs. These tabs mimic what is found in the BMW top case and use the stock rubber bumpers. This rugged plate may be purchased separately for you to deploy your own designs. Using a sub-assembly of the BMW luggage rack, we will demonstrate how the LRM is mounted. The front retaining tabs engage the front of the rack and the rear bolts enter the rear openings. This is a close fit, so be careful you don't drag the bolts on your luggage rack. Viewing the LRM from the bottom, we see the positioning. It needs to be securely forward with the rear bolt centered on the luggage rack. Once this is in place, a retaining plate with positioning tabs prevents the LRM from moving. The LRM is secured in place using an aluminum plate with tabs, two stainless steel flat washers to protect the paint, and two thumb nuts. Thumb nuts are used to make installation and removal toolless. Once this is in place, the LRM cannot shift left, right, or rearward. Holes have been drilled in the thumb nuts so they can be safety wired or spot tied for security. We will demonstrate using spot tie. You'll want to use a spot tie at least 8 inches in length. Naturally, you have your Leatherman tool handy, right? Use of a Dayglow green spot tie is optional. The LRM luggage deck is fabricated from 1 8 inch aluminum and features slots around the perimeter for tie down points. At each rear corner are 3 quarter inch holes suitable for antenna mounting. Viewing the bottom of the luggage deck, you see the mounting rails that are used to reinforce the deck. Rubber pads are used for vibration isolation and to protect the paint. The luggage deck is secured to the LRM plate through the four center holes using stainless steel M8 bolts. The LRM tank is secured to the LRM using four studs which pass through the tank. The studs are secured at the chosen holes in the, rear, in the base and the tank is slipped over the studs. The M8 bolts used to secure the deck are used again. The tank may be installed singly or sandwiched beneath the LRM deck. Note the rubber padding on the base of the tank. Again, these are for vibration isolation and to protect the paint. Here you see the cell mounted to the base. This may be a snug fit, but when everything is level and aligned, the sill will slide over the studs. The next step is to place the deck on top and secure it with the M8 bolts. Due to the rubber padding, you may have to press down to get the bolts started. Here we have the completed assembly. We'll recap some of the features and point out some new ones. There's an extra hole at each luggage mount L bracket. This allows the Pelican Storm case to be moved rearward one inch, which provides additional space at the front should you need it. There are antenna holes at the rear corners, 
and rectangular tie-down slots around the perimeter of the deck. This is a non-vented cap. It is secured to the tank with a brass lanyard. You never think you'll forget to put it back, but someday you will, and that lanyard will come in handy. The lanyard is attached to the tank using a loop of copper wire with hooks bent into the ends. This is pressed into the tank past the filler neck. Should you need to remove the cap, a strong pull will straighten the wire. To reinsert, just bend some loops back into the wire and stuff it back into the tank, far enough for the loops to go past the filler neck. The drain of the cell is a one quarter inch national pipe thread fitting, so it uses readily available hardware. The shutoff valve is a one quarter inch full flow ball valve with nitro seals. Here's an interesting point. Due to all of our rubber anti-vibration mounting, the cell is electrically isolated from the motorcycle. We've attached a one quarter inch electrical spade tab to the drain, so you can attach a bonding wire to the frame of the motorcycle to provide a ground. If you're still with us, we're finally ready to put this on a bike, a new BMW K1600 GTL. If you've ever put a top case on a BMW, then this is no surprise. The only difference is making sure that you've got it centered and pressed firmly forward. Next, you put the retaining plate in place and fasten it with the washers and nuts. Note that when tightening these nuts, you are compressing the rubber bumpers. As such, you will need to alternate between the nuts to try to get the compression uniform on each side. It might even be a good idea to take a spin around the block to let things settle in before you put on your safety wire or spot tie. Getting the spot tie in place was easier on the workbench, but if you do any wrenching at all, you know there are harder tasks. Installation of the bulkhead fitting is documented elsewhere. But here you see where the fuel line comes alongside the frame. There's a nice clearance here between the frame and the trim. The fuel line runs outside of the seat and then drops inside about midpoint on the seat. Some minor surgery on the plastic is required. We used a Dremel tool to route out a slot for the fuel line to run under the seat. Since a bonding wire is required, we found a nice frame ground point on the mounting screw of the electronics box. The bonding wire is attached here and then routed alongside the fuel line to the tab on the drain. The fuel line is routed through our slot and the quick connect fittings are attached. The area near the seat latch is very tight. If you don't have the line routed just right, the seat will not sit completely down latch. The vent line is routed down alongside the right pannier. The rear splice guard on the K1600 GTL has a nice location for a spot tie. We left it loose so the line could be removed without cutting the tie. This completes the initial installation. Now that you have everything in place, this unit is easily removed and reinstalled to suit your riding needs. Next, we will demonstrate mounting the optional Pelican Storm Case. We use the Wheeled Airline Carry-On Qualified IM2500 case because it, because it is easily modified for our quick release mechanism. Center the case on the deck, slide it to the left, making sure both L brackets are engaged, and then secure the latch. The commercial bolt latch is padlockable. This concludes our presentation of the BMW Luggage Rack Mount System, and thank you again for your time. We welcome inquiries and can schedule a build for you. You can find additional information at our website. 
If you've made it this far, we have one final treat for you, the shake test. Now you have one secure mounting system.